Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jamie back again with another video and it's a follow-up to the most recent upload that I did. And it appears that um, the government um, has, has actually uh, released another update on further guidelines that manufacturers or what we call PMD devices in Singapore uh, there's a certain standard that we actually have to follow now. So today's video is a summary of what I actually found out regarding the UL2272. What is the UL2272? And who actually is UL? So UL actually stands for Underwriters Laboratories. It's a very, very old uh, company I think uh, they've got world-class certifications uh, all over the world if you look at the uh, some of the uh, electrical devices in, that you have in Singapore it could be plugs switches you know there's always a uh, another standard would be the CE certified yeah you would see it on a lot of uh, electrical appliances now UL2272 specifically refers to a certification in fact it was it was first given out to Ninebot. So I actually went to the, onto their website and I realized that technically that's the only company that they have issued that particular certification for and it's to Ninebot. Yeah, it's actually um, the parent company of uh, Sagway. So obviously it's a Chinese company. The UL2272 specifically refers to self balancing hoverboards so the one wheel that I'm riding now actually has a different uh, set of uh, certifications and it's more on the electromagnetic certifications so that is for the one wheel but the UL2272 has been certified specifically for 9 baht. Uh, the very first scooter that they certified the electrical mechanical as well as the environmental uh, testing for the nine bot so these are the three main criteria that the certification looks into uh, ensuring that you know it is in uh, a, a good enough uh, as is it a good enough product so that people will not have to worry about these three broad aspects of the product itself so I'm just going to run through some uh, details with regards to the uh, UL2272. So let's just start with the first one which is uh, electrical testing uh, and what it actually covers. So under electrical testing, there are several categories. It covers mainly overcharge, over discharge, temperature, Imbalanced charging, grounding continuity tests, isolation resistance. Um, okay, so that's for your electrical testing. And I guess the reason why the government has actually put forth uh, the UL2272 standard mainly is because to mitigate the fires that we've been having all over the island. So, I mean, understandably so. Um, and maybe that's the reason why you know the U UL2272 is actually mentioned you know it is really to mitigate all these fires that's happening all over Singapore right now um, although I'm not exactly sure what the statistics are but uh, I think it is a good step forward uh, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's very necessary at this point in time because this uh, particular standard will only come into effect in the year 2021 the year is 2018 so that's one thing moving on mechanical testing okay mechanical testing covers vibration shock crush so there's a crush test as well drop test a mole stress relief and i think of particular importance more stress relief because again you know I've seen some um, scooters that actually uh, they actually crumble I wouldn't say crumble they have actually uh, separated from all the, the joints so again that 
is extremely important because you could be traveling at 25 kilometers an hour and you wouldn't want the East Coast to actually fall apart. And you know, it's a, it's a very serious thing, you know, it could be almost fatal actually. All right, and then there's also strain relief and that's our handle loading test. So it's basically to see, you know, how much weight the e-scoot or the PMD can handle. And then uh, lastly, you've got your environmental testing, which means to say that uh, it has to be at least an IPX4 as a minimal rating under the UL2272 standard. Now, whatever that I'm uh, sharing with you guys today, I've posted several links uh, below. So if you guys have time, you know, you should definitely go check those links out and, um, you know, at least, you know, you'll be in a much better position to, um, to, to, if you're a manufacturer or if you're a shop and you want to find out a little bit more stuff, I think those links are actually very, very useful. Um, and it even has a database. So basically what I tried to do is uh, I went to the database to actually try to find out if uh, there are other companies other than Ninebot, you know, and, and, and I actually think that it's quite a huge database. So currently only Ninebot appears under the search. They've got uh, quite a few devices that's already been certified uh, UL2272. I tried to search for my favorite devices. Uh, <laughs> Obviously the one wheel, the Dualtron, and the Stealth Electric Bike, but uh, I don't see them in that database. Again, the UL2272, you know, it is a, um, it's a laboratory where they issue certificates to make sure that, you know, all these items are safe for consumer use. So I don't think, you know, the government should be given that much flag, you know, for trying to ensure the safety of uh, the users in, in general. Um, in any case, what I think that um, all of you should be looking forward to, uh, forward to, is that devices coming into Singapore, uh, coming into Singapore. So I think the onus would be on the shops and the retail shops in Singapore to to look out for UL two two seven two certification. Over and above that, there should be other certifications that will be on par with the UL2272 or at least exceed the certification for UL2272. So I don't think it's the end all be all kind of standard. I believe that there are other standards out there that will adhere or if not exceed the UL2272 uh, certification. Other than the three main focus that I highlighted, I also went through the white paper. There's actually a white paper that you could, you could download regarding the UL2272 certification. So I think it was a quite an uh, interesting read. Again, it specifically mentions uh, manufacturers and how they should go about um, grading their product. And really, it's just a very, very broad system to make sure that the PMD device is actually, you know, um, is actually secured, especially when it comes to the electrical system, you know, it's not a fire hazard. I don't think there's anything to worry about. I think it's really in the interest of uh, the consumer. And uh, I think our anger and frustration is unfounded. And I believe, uh, you know, that there are people in Singapore that is looking into the situation and perhaps, you know, other than a UL2272 standards, there are probably other standards that uh, the government could consider uh, when they bring devices uh, into Singapore. So, hey, you know what? Maybe we have uh, an even bigger choice. After all, it's going to be another three more years. And basically that's the video for today. I hope you guys liked it. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you guys are not already subscribed, do consider subscribing. It gives me a lot of encouragement to continue the channel and bring the kind of content that I do. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If there's anything that you like me to cover in my next video, please share with me in the comments below. I actually want to do a series of uh, videos that talks about entrepreneurship, starting a business in Singapore, in fact living in Singapore, in this part of the world, you know, if anyone's interested, please let me know and I'll be most happy to reply and until the next video, you guys ride safe and take care, bye.